Welcome to part 5. We ran a little out of time on part 4, so I'm just going to finish up with a couple more Photoshop tips. Then I'll give you a good website for some images, and uh, that will be all for tonight. So now I want to show you another kind of uh, little thing I was working on for episode 21, uh, where you fit an object into a certain space. So this, um, this suicide bomber is thinking about different things that he's uh, using to justify blowing something up, for example. So as you go down the list, you know, he's the glory of Allah, 72 virgins, infidels, and so on. So you can see that each picture is then cropped perfectly to this thought bubble. This was the original picture that um, I had. It was basically Chris Farley from the movie um, Tommy Boy, I think it was. And, uh, you know, there's just some, I think the picture was actually cut off here. And I needed to make a little bit wider screen to have room to put the thought bubble. This tool here is sort of like a, a clone tool. And if you hit Alt and you sample like a section, then you can... So like if I wanted to put his head here, I would copy that area. That's like my anchor point right here. And then I could like move him over here. See, it's basically just copying him. So what you do if you want to clear something out, you just copy like a blank piece of space. See, there's like a piece of window there. So I just copy over that. And I can make all this go away too if I didn't want that tree there. I can just basically blend that out. for example. Uh, then I also copied this pillar. Um, I just made a copy of the pillar and put that there just for, you know, just to kind of clear that out to make it look a little bit neater. So what we want is a thought bubble here. So we're going to go into Google and type in so this one looks like a good one. Okay, we can see that um, this looks like it's going to be a matted image so when we save it we also want a couple more images we can put in there so say God now see this thought bubble is already pre-matted so that saves us some trouble otherwise when you paste it in here if it had like kind of a white border around it you just do the same thing you take the the uh, magic wand and just select outside of it and then just delete the excess and that's how you can mat it yourself. We want to remove these so I'm going to take the, uh, the select tool, the select tool right here, the lasso, and just go around it. Cut it. Paste it and then we're going to do the transform. Turn it around and then just put it right there like that, like he's thinking. Now our goal is to get these images that we've imported to fit this. So we're gonna grab God here, paste him in. Now we're gonna go double click this and make it transparent. Transform him. Basically what we're looking for is that the border is matching this black outline here. We don't want any kind of white or black to show through. So that looks good. We'll apply it. Bring the opacity back up. So what we're going to do is just turn this layer off, take our, uh, take our magic wand tool, and we're going to go to the layer with the thought bubble and select inside. So we can see the outline is all through there. Now we're going to turn back on the layer of God, make sure that's selected, and then we're going to make sure this option selected here, the select tool, right click and say layer via cut. Now all you have to do is just delete the, uh, the part that we don't want, and now it's perfectly cropped to the thought bubble. Now the last tip for this tutorial is going to be how to skew things like text or certain objects and make them look like they're at an angle from the viewer. And uh, what I basically did was these are each layers, the text and the images were layers. What I did was I went through and I removed what was there already. So I used this tool again and went through and I sampled like a piece of blank area or like at the sides and then I just went through and I cleaned it up. I cleaned up the spots and removed whatever text was there. Then I created my own text. And then you just got to go through and find like a font that's acceptable. 
So I'm using this font here. It's called a Century font. That looks okay. And we're going to probably change the color as well. And what I'm doing, I'm basically just sampling some of the background because that's okay. Make it a little bit bigger. And now we're going to give some uh, depth to the words here. So we're going to go to the effects, blending options, and do like inner shadow. And that kind of makes it look like there's some depth there to the words, like they may be like carved into the stone. Now we need to make this look like it's going to lay flat against this, this piece. So it needs to kind of be going along this, this plane. So we're going to go up to Control T, and we're going to transform it. Now, remember how we did Shift keeps the aspect of it. Removing Shift basically allows you to do whatever you want. If you hold down Control and go over to the edge, you can skew. Just manipulate each of the corners. And that looks good enough, I guess. So it sort of looks like it's on the same plane as this now. There's also uh, some additional options if you go into Edit and then Transform. You can see here that there's Skew, the same option that we did with Control T and then holding down Control as you use manipulate the text. Um, warp is also a really good thing this gives you a grid and then say you wanted to just bring down like a portion of the the text like it may be drooping or, or however you want to do it this allows you to have a lot more control over certain things so if you had like a picture of somebody or something you could really uh, manipulate it and, and make it look however you want for example so that's like the last tip I have for this uh, for this tutorial uh, before I go, I also wanted to show you guys a, a quick website that's, uh, that's pretty good that I found. It's called visualphotos.com. The reason I like this website is because their trademark, their watermarks, are very simple. Uh, these are very easy to get rid of. Uh, sometimes you'll come across these pictures that are uh, copyright protected and they have like a lot of different um, watermarks all over the image and they're hard to get rid of. Uh, but this website has pretty decent you know high quality images and the watermarks are very easy to get rid of so just a quick example like say I want to use this picture so I've copied this like I would normally into my template and I'm just gonna work on it now uh, another option that's a little bit quicker is the fill option um, depending on the space that you have to uh, to get rid of if it's sort of like a big space like this try to get uh, try to select the border as close as you can then right click and go down to fill you can see that it pretty much gets rid of it very nicely now because it was a square you might be able to tell that there's a little outline of a square here um, and if that's so you can just take the clone stamp tool and uh, kind of fill that in a bit Now say you wanted to get rid of this uh, telephone pole. You do the same thing. You could even, might be better even if you get the uh, lasso tool. And just go around it like that. And you can just take the clone stamp tool and get rid of little extras that you don't want.
So, you know, if you couldn't find a picture elsewhere and you could find it on one of those sites, this is how you remove the, um, the little watermark that they put on there. So that's about it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and post them. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've done in the series that you might want to try to replicate in your own production, just go ahead and leave me a message or a comment. And uh, if I get time, I'll try to post a little tutorial on how I produce that or how I edit certain things. Um, nothing I do is very complicated. It's very basic stuff. Uh, so you know if if you're an advanced user then you can probably disregard these uh, tutorials these are for kind of intermediate users but if you're an advanced user then this is probably going to be just uh, all review for you so I hope you found this tutorial useful and I'll try to post more updates when I can thanks a lot